Welcome to the Weekly Pick and Pack, the podcast about all things inventory. Pick and Pack, powered by Fishbowl. Welcome to the Weekly Pick and Pack. This is episode six. My name is Nate Flake. And I'm the other Nate. All right. Today we got a guest here. I'll let you introduce yourself. My name is James Shores. And what is your title? I am the creative director at Fishbowl. Cool. Okay, so we're going to talk about branding and stuff. Um, this episode is actually sponsored by Shipworks. So these guys are doing a giveaway, and so it started December 2nd, which is two days ago when we published this. Um, so if you guys want to enter, they're doing 20 days of giveaways. Shipworks is one of our integrated integration partners. Um, they do an awesome shipping product that all of everyone that uses Fishbowl um, that you know wants to ship out orders. They do um, all the fees and the freight fees with them um, with those orders. And so if you want to join this giveaway, Fishbowl is actually providing one of the prizes. Um, it's a speaker, right, Sean? Sean's a fact checker. It's a speaker. <laughs> he says yes. He can concur. You know, I can't. I can't this see me. A, oh, there's the thumbs up. There you go. Yeah, we're gonna. Sean uh, like also has big, very large monitors in front of his face most yeah, of the time. I can't even see him. Um, so if you guys want to go to that, um, to enter, just go to Shipworks, sorry, go to promo.shipworks.com slash 20 days. Once again, that is promo.shipworks.com slash 20 days. And you can enter to win a bunch of uh, cool stuff, some gift cards and a speaker from Fishbowl. Um, I like Shipworks. Yeah, they're cool. We um, Great we company. Talk, yeah, those guys are cool guys. We've talked to them a lot. Um so, yeah, so we're coming off a week of Thanksgiving. How was you guys' Thanksgiving? Good? It was great. Yeah, it was really good. Ate too much, you know, the usual. Yeah. Just the we can talk time. about freezers now or? So <laughs> that, this is a good entryway into that. No, but I was actually, I didn't even tell you this, James. So my in-laws, they have a big house up on a hill. I know. One oh, of those things, you, you, one married, of those you married up. Yeah, she definitely married down. That's she for settled. Sure. Yeah. Oh, we, we know she settled. Oh, well, that's obvious. Big but house on the hill. Yeah, she she came to the realization really quickly that she wasn't going to have the same lifestyle that she grew up with. <laughs> Was it is it a private mansion or just a regular mansion? Well, aren't it's all, private in, in the sense private? that like her her it's family's not, the only one to live there. Like she's on the dorm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a castle that's sh- yeah. shared with everyone. They do tours every Monday and Wednesday at two o'clock. <laughs> cool. So in that way, it's kind of public land. Let's go. There. <laughs> anyway, snowed the night before Thanksgiving, right? Yep. Older lady. Uh, elderly woman was driving down the hill and crashed into like the transformer box or whatever. So the power went out on the entire like in that whole section of the grid. Of all or whatever. things that she could hit on Thanksgiving Day at noon. Uh, Literally, it, the power was out from noon to four in like this area that has a bunch of giant houses. So everyone that lives there is hosting, hosting Thanksgiving. So there was a little bit of panic in uh, my family's Thanksgiving, but we ended up. How do they able to char- how do they charge their Teslas? <laughs> They didn't during those four hours. It was really, no, oh, yeah. Was, I mean, yeah. So what did you guys do? You had to obviously like. Yeah, so divide, wife and I had to take our, the conquer. turkey back to our house. And luckily, everyone lives pretty close by. So we just kind of so divided and conquered. they like summoned the, you know, smart the summon on their Tesla and then drove to. <laughs> those are the neighbors, not my in-laws. Oh, okay, okay. Just on the off chance that anyone that I know actually ends up <laughs> listening to this. <laughs> Don't you drive an electric van, James? Why are you roasting no, a Tesla? No, I'm not. Oh, I, <laughs> I, it's because I wish I could have one. <laughs> An electric right. van. That's, it's a public bus. There's it's a essentially. All right. Okay, so we're going to talk about branding today. How long have you been at Fishbowl? Uh, over little, six years. Give a little background. So I've been at Fishbowl for over six years. I actually started. It was you know a hire of nepotism. There you go. Back in the day, that's that's how Fishbowl works. Um, Part time, and then uh, I wasn't too terrible at the job, so they kept me around, and I just kind of you know moved up from there. Okay, sweet. So you, I know we've worked with you a lot on some different like video content and things like that. Um, today we want to talk about um, branding, yeah, logos, video marketing, anything that kind of falls into that um, for our listeners who are you know people in the SMB space with, that we're assuming have inventory. Otherwise, they wouldn't be listening to this. Um, so, first question: How important is starting off? your company or your, you know, startup or who, even a company that's a, that's a little bit bigger that, that has been existing, how, how important is it to start off with the right branding, the right look and feel, 
color scheme, all that. You hear about people rebranding all the time. We'll come yeah. to that a little bit later. But how important is that to get off the right foot from the beginning? I mean, that's your first chance for, I mean, most people that are coming at you that do not know who you are, what you do, that's your first chance to, you know, it's your first impression. So it can really make a huge difference. Um, you really see that when you go into, like, a conference space or a trade space where you're going attending a show. I mean, I was at the NAB show, which is, stands for the National Association of Broadcasters. They had a show in New York. Did you uh, make that up? Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> that was the NAB show. That's weird. The that's NA, the it's the NAB <laughs> show. No, there's a DAB show that's different. It's oh, kids. my bad. Um, that's for kids. No, and no, no, no. all you got to do... <laughs> Okay, I'll, sorry. Might I'm have to do some podcast. editing on this. A one. little bit. It's okay. <laughs> no, <you're good. laughs> so I, I walk the floor for two reasons. There's a, there's a ton of technical gear, cameras, lighting, all that kind of stuff. But I was also looking at kind of logos and just getting a sense of trying to look at what they had and wonder like if you removed that equipment, would I have a very quick idea of what they did by looking at their font, their logo, what their company was called? And I would say a lot of companies, you could not, if you just threw them all up on a wall, you wouldn't know what they did or what they were part of. And that's okay to an extent, you know, because some of those names, they might get you hooked because you're wondering, well, what does that name curiosity. mean? Yeah, it's like, well, what is that? You know, it might be a cool name, and then you want to know more about them. You know, but if, you're, if your name is AAA Light Company, I mean, that in my mind automatically would go to like, well, that sounds like something my grandparents had back in the day. Yeah. You know, like that was for the... Because you already associated that with something. Right. And Which so I think part of association is huge. And so if, you're, if your logo looks like, oh, that's totally unrelated to what your field is, like that's a huge problem. Like you should always be asking people their opinion about what does this remind you of or what does this sound like and be pitching and bouncing those ideas off so that you're not getting kind of a narrow focus of what you think it is because it's going to be different for everyone else. So the answer is super important to start off right, right? I think so. What are some things? So you said, what are some things you consider when you go into starting your branding, logo, color scheme, all that? Like, so associations one. Yeah, I think uh, first and foremost, look at what your competitors are doing, because if you're doing something that is way out in left field, I think you might be creating a problem. Trying to be like too unique. Yeah. So it's like if, if there's some similarities, it helps maybe to kind of align that way just a little bit, unless you're trying to – you have a very clear vision of, no, I want to stand out. Yeah. Um, plus it helps to see what's the color scheme, what are people using, because if you get too close, you might be mistaken for someone else, or even people might think you're trying to just imitate. Just straight up copy. Yeah. And you see you see a lot of copy. Um, you know, someone starts something popular and everyone jumps on board. How deep do you get into that rabbit hole, though? Like I know that like with some brands like – I don't know, like Burger King and McDonald's, right? Like, isn't yellow and orange, like, are those supposed to be things that make you hungrier or something? Like, there's some, like, psychological effect or, like, you know, I'm, do you get that deep in that you, like, are trying to figure out what's going to make people think of you? And You definitely read about that, and I'm sure there's some people that think about it, and maybe subconsciously they're, they're getting me, and I don't even know that I've been had. Good point. But what I came think first? Exactly. Was, Mc, was McDonald's got, yellow? Got, got. I got got. Well, I got, got. you know, I'm, I'm trying to ride that. that range between you know who we're talking to here, North no? Utah <clears throat> and educated people. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think at the end of the day, it has to be there has to be enough visual appeal, or you go. Ugh. Yeah, I was. It's interesting. I was actually talking to someone on Saturday night, uh, this UX designer, and he does. Um, Kind of like what you do, but he does, he kind of freelances, does like video marketing, and he just told like full branding packages. So he's probably good at it. Yeah, he's like way way successful. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so he, but we were talking about app design, UX design, just general branding, and because I was asking him, you know, hey, you know, what do you charge for full brand, like logo, all that, right? If someone's coming from nothing, all they know is their company name, and he was kind of going through some of his pricing and stuff, and he showed me one of the projects he did. And it was like a very dark app, but it was like a product type selling, uh, like a commerce type website. And he's like, yeah, they picked, they wanted this dark color scheme, which turned out to be a total flop. And I told them, hey, like, look at who's done it. So it kind of reminds what you said, like Amazon, Target, Walmart. If you look at their apps, they're all like bright white. Yep super bright colors because there's tons of science and like he's like there's people that are getting paid 
you know, they have like 500 people that are just assigned to do the studies, like Nate was saying. So, yeah. so what, like, yeah, so you want to be different, but you don't want to when you have try to, to be you have so to be looking different. at the yeah. trends because there's something to be said about you know standing out. But if you try to get ahead of the game too early, I think it's it's you're too much of an outlier, and people just disregard it. Yeah. Like you, I mean, you see one of the trends right now. Um, I can see it in Salesforce and a few other places where it's really popular now to kind of have this uh, cartoon. Yeah. And so using a little trailhead guy, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So there's a lot of like colorful What's cartoon stuff. It's 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 flat looking, kind of matte colors, mm-hmm. um, and you're starting to see more and more of that used. Um, but I think if if that had come out three years ago when the flat icon look was really strong. I think people go, what? What is that? Now, I, you know, I may not want that as much as as they're promoting it as far as that look, but it's obviously popular enough that a lot of other people are starting to use it too. Yeah. So it's kind of like you know finding that balance between being new enough, but still familiar. Yeah. How hard is it to change? Well, I think you know it's going to depend on how much do you got out there. Amount of money. Yeah. You're just starting. Well, that's so easy. You're agile. You can. Yeah. You can change your mind and do something different next week. If your company our size, what I mean, we're at 160. I mean, we're not yeah. massive at all, but we've got a ton of stuff out there. Website, literature, Long et cetera. Yeah. And Product. You've got yeah. a lot of things Swag. you have to be mindful of to get swapped over if you're really trying to do an overhaul. Yeah. I mean, there's I feel like a couple bigger companies here, especially here in Utah, have done like some recent rebranding. Yeah, and it takes it takes some it takes work, so much time, probably it's a to, lot well, of forethought, and you're stick, and you have to start from scratch on, kind of what we talked to George about on the, on episode, can't remember four or five. Yeah, for the SEO stuff. Yeah, all the SEO stuff. You're basically wiping that clean and r- starting over. And I think that's one of the biggest parts that probably does get missed. That we, and we even talk about that in, in marketing meetings. Is there's so many other moving pieces now. It's not just like we need to get a print ad out there so people are like, oh, that's the new look of fishbowl or whatever it's like well no you are now tied digitally to so many different backlinks and rankings and you start messing with that and it's like you you kind of have a house of cards in some respects yeah Yeah. and it's hard to think about like how many times you need to get that message in front of people for that to actually like stick right because they don't all care about your company as much as you do no surprisingly enough i think think of how many billboards you pass any given day i mean at least around here coming up and down the 15 i mean Yeah. yeah How many of those companies are you going, oh, man, that one really left an impression? None. Like, yeah. they have to over and over and over <laughs> hit you even think about, something. like, Super Bowl commercials, right? You, like, think yeah. about funny commercials, and you're like, who, what, who was that for again? I don't even remember, but it was a good commercial. You, like, you, yeah. like, and they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on those. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, it's a tough tough art to So, you have to find that, that balance. I mean, speaking of, you know, the one, uh, speaking of commercials, last year, the one that Ty did. It was clever because they used the idea of all these different Super Bowl commercials. And it was David, Ten- uh, not David Tennant, David Harbour uh, from Stranger Things. And they kept doing the, oh, is this a car commercial? Oh, no, it's a Tide commercial because they would show his clean clothes. Oh. Oh. And they kept pointing out, I mean, think of any commercial Smart. you watch like that yeah. where it's everyone looks very clean. Oh, and, yeah. they, and then so they used that to their advantage, pointing out like, well, yeah, because it's Tide that kept it clean. Interesting. Yeah. That is very smart. So... Yeah, I mean, and that's that's obviously different than branding, but as far as like what people are paying attention to, that's very clever, very, yeah. very, very smart. Yeah. What are all the elements that go into branding? Oh, well, you're you're asking the wrong guy now. I don't. <laughs> Aren't you, you a creative do, guy? Like, Photoshop. You got pencils, I think. And, <laughs> I mean, you're you're looking at again. Let's say you're, you you are a I don't know. Let's say you sell construction supplies online. I'm just okay. making crap up. Do you want this like? flowing swoopy very soft logo yeah probably not I, I imagine you want something that kind of projects strength and probably harder edges yeah right so i mean whatever you're creating it has to also convey the movement the feel of what your company is what, what they, the product is what what you do yeah because otherwise like, you're sending a mixed message like imagine totally i mean but imagine you sell i mean be gross here for a minute imagine you sell tampons yeah right and it's like these like hard, going. jagged edges to your logo. Yeah. What? I'm d- it's terrible. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Why is that bad? <laughs> no one now, what's even worse is using that as a, an example for what we're talking about. But you get the point. Yeah. yeah. Why 
Hey, isn't that what came to your mind? That's what I want to know. I have no like, idea. How is that you the first no example? Because no, because I'm think, thinking of any. I mean, think of what their logos are. I know that. Yeah. I know that. You know. You got food. Other Nate, you definitely know what those are. You got food. Uh, Sean has confirmed. It looks like on the screen that that was a terrible example. So <laughs> thank you for the fact check, Sean. I said yes. That was a terrible example. And the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think we should definitely cut that part out. Just saying. Okay. It did paint the picture, though. Like, I'm not going to Makes it. sense. So we're just, just going to Okay. It. Um, <laughs> I'll own it. I'll own it. Anyone can come up and be like, what? Why? And I'll be like, I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, James at Fishbowl and Okay. Um, couple. So talking about branding, some of the tools. So like a lot of the, the kind of the episodes we've had so far, we've, we've liked to ask the question like, okay, imagine you're starting from scratch. <laughs> Talked about inventory tools and different uh, developing tools. So now we're talking about marketing and now we're more about branding. What are some tools? Like if I'm starting from scratch and I'm trying to line up my branding, I have no idea where to start. Are there tools out there now? There's probably got to be tons out there compared to what they were 10 years ago. Right. To where I don't have to go find a, a go find an ad agency to like make me some, yeah, there there are definitely a lot of um, websites that you can like literally pay for a price or a subscription and they have all these logos and you can put your stuff in but those all start to feel pretty samey. Yeah. Um, you, the next step up from that is something like, uh, you know, you pay for it on a Fiverr and I'm not necessarily promoting Fiverr at all, but yeah. you know, Upwork. you can, you can have Upwork. what is Fiverr? Sorry. So, I don't know what it is. so Fiverr is essentially, you're like talking about like a $5 bill. Like just well, that, well, that's, yeah. the, Fiverr. that's the me basic Fiverr premise. <laughs> and I'll draw a logo with a marker. Right that's now. literally, yeah. Think of that. Like any okay. kind of service you might want. And it's the, the original premise is you know, pay me five bucks and I can do a quick version of, a logo or a jingle or a catchphrase or, yeah. I mean, a whole range of services, right? Okay. Um, so you get a little bit more um, customization there. And it's still, I mean, relative to what you can it's pay, it's still product, pretty cheap. Though. Cool. Yeah, still, I mean, still we did our very cheap. The intro to this podcast is done on Fiverr. Oh, yeah. look at that. Guy in Scotland. Boom. There you Shout go. out to, I uh, can't remember his name, sorry. <laughs> Shout out to the Make guy. Make something, <laughs> I don't know. He's probably the only one there that does it, right? Oh, yeah, the whole countryside. <laughs> McFiver. Pretty sure that's oh, his name. Oh, McFiver. <laughs> <laughs> this is out of control. It's fantastic. I love it. Okay. Sorry, so, but so you're talking about no, logo generation, logo so, tools. And, and that, you know, I think that can work too, but that also, I think very quickly, it has a look of like, well, it's quick and thrown together and kind of cheap. Um, you know, beyond that, you're really starting to go into – someone who does freelance and it definitely can get expensive. You know, you might be paying a guy a hundred dollars an hour, but at the same time you really can get what you pay for. So if you're just starting out, it's a matter of, well, do you want this to be something that people remember? Or are you just trying to get up something real fast? Like what's the point of what you're creating? Yeah. Is it a website? Is it a service? Is it an app? Is it just something that needs placeholder or is this like going to live on forever for years? You know, if, if you're successful. Yeah, which I imagine is the goal for most. People. I, I think that's what people that's want. Is when they start a business, want. they want to keep want having to that business. business. Yeah, yeah. Sean, fact Crazy. checker, Sean. If you're just joining this episode, by the way, for the first time, <laughs> go back and listen to the rest. But Sean is uh, doesn't want to get on the podcast, so he's our fact checker. But he can talk, right? Like someone told me he was mute. He's not a no, mute. He doesn't, he usually like what's with all the hand signals though? So what's that? Five. So he just wrote on the board. Fiber guy. John O'Call is that honestly his name? It is now. Oh, he just made it up. I thought right. The guy's name is actually John too. So. Shout out to John. John, John O'Callaghan. John O'Callaghan. <laughs> um, okay, one more question, then we're going to go to our first segment. We're going to start doing segments um, from people, you know, on social media, and, and one more question. We want to hear from you guys. This is a question from Twitter. When is rebranding a good idea? We talked about it a little bit earlier, but oh, like, okay. why would you ever do that? Um. I think if you, again, I would go back to what I said in the beginning is look at your space, look at your competition. So if everyone is, if it feels like you fit within that sphere of like, all right, well, we, we have kind of a similar style or similar yeah. look, but we're still our own thing. That's, I think that's the beginning of a barometer so you can feel it out. Now, if, if it's very clear that everyone has updated and you're still hanging back, mm -hmm. I think visually it should be pretty apparent by just doing a quick look of who's in your space. And when we talk about rebranding, we're not talking about like 
full blown name change. It could be a color no, scheme. No. It could be a logo rebrand. Absolutely. There, there's. I mean, there's such a degree of like. There's probably a scale there, right? Co- color is a lot more easy than a whole new logo. Yeah. Which is easier than the logo and the whole like name. let's say it's a whole messaging. Um, and a lot of that then ties into the website or, you know, however your main platform of reaching your customers or clients. So if you're falling behind, if you've to- totally, you know, royally screwed it up the first round, then you can redo it. Another one. So a company here in Utah. Well, it, it, it comes down to cost too, right? Like oh, yeah. if, if you, you have don't have something in house, right? you got to start evaluating what's the, what's the ROI on this. Because they're really, I mean, some of that stuff, it's going to be hard to say, like, okay, if we redesign or at least do some new messaging on the homepage of, let's say we have a website, yeah, you know, that may not be expensive, but then we also need to continue on the rest of the site. We might need some new imagery, and that can start to get expensive if you don't have someone in-house or if, or if you want to go beyond just you. Yeah. And yet, the first, I mean, think about a web page that you land on, and it looks like, oh, man, they haven't changed anything since mid-2000s. Yeah. How quick are you to just bounce? Pretty often, even if they have good stuff, right? Like if something feels old. It just looks scammy almost. Yeah, you start to question it immediately, even if the content is good. Yeah, that's true. A company here, another kind of reason that I think people may rebrand, and I have an example for this, but is if if like the name of your company quickly becomes synonymous with like a a trend or a process. Yeah. So like InsideSales.com, awesome company here in Utah, they got way too, like people were just thought, it's like a, such a buzzed word now, inside sales, right? So yeah. people were Googling inside sales, looking for different articles or whatever content, and they were coming up on this website. I don't I don't know, like they, so they ended up rebranding like a couple weeks ago to Zant, X-A-N-T, mm. which they, I watched the video, because I, I, and they like new color and new everything, but they said it was because the That's word a cogn- total overhaul. cognizant, the end of, be, the end of being cognizant or something it was kind of weird, but Zant. That was oh. a total like. It's funny because you go to Zant.com right now. It's like a windmill company in California. So really, joke, jokes on them. Yeah, <laughs> Zant AI is their website. No, that's kind of yeah, funny. interesting. Yeah, see, and so there's the gamble too, like right? Because like, who <laughs> yeah. who thinks like? Yeah. I, I wonder if it's different than .com. We still mostly assume it's probably .com, it's probably right? .com, yeah. And so it's like already right there. If they just take your name, oh yeah, .com. It's like what the, what is this? Or how many times is there a company that is pronounced like a normal word, but it's just yeah. spelled completely differently? They, and you're yeah. like, I, I'm never going to be able to find this. You throw in three E's, and now you're a tech company. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, another example, and I promise it won't be weird this time. So I'm I don't remember a couple years okay ago when um, grab, grab the whole... <laughs> <laughs> right Wait, Sean's, Sean's shaking his head. I don't... Uh-oh. No, uh-oh. He's going to pull the plug and not tell me. Ready to beep things out? There was a credit card uh, that... When the whole credit card on your phone, Apple Pay, all that was starting to really ramp up a few years ago, there yeah. was a company called Isis that came out. Oh, I heard about that. That's this. a bad name. And they were, they were, it made sense. Like their whole platform was actually pretty solid. And they were one of the f- earlier ones in that market. And then all of a sudden we had the other Isis. The more well known, like world renowned yeah, Isis, the, probably. The, the cutting heads off Isis. And so it's like, that's definitely a time that you might want to reconsider. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Did they <laughs> I'm ever pissed you if you're that guy that came up with um, the You know what? I don't actually know. I don't actually know. Fact checker, let's get it Fact, on. Come let's on. Get on us so you can figure that out. Look up ISIS and then know that you're on you the list. You may or may not be get on like your now. flagged, though. Yeah. yeah get, you're on, not. get on LTE and then do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> IT's going to bust in here. Darren just Who's looking up ISIS? <laughs> breaks through the glass. It'd be window. funnier if he was like, you too? You too. It's like you're looking at it too? I don't know. That'd be funnier. <laughs> Very Alrighty. concerning, that's so for sure. So we're going to do, let us know, Sean. We're waiting. But anyways, we'll come back. Um, okay, so we're going to do no the first pressure. segment. One job. The first segment, and I hope this doesn't hit too close to home. But So if anyone, we're going to start doing these segments to kind of get more um, listener engagement, I guess, right? Um, so the first one we're going to do is c- c- called Office Peeves. Okay, so if you want to submit one of these, just go to either our Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Um, Fishbowl Inventory is across the board on all three of those. And then do hashtag Office Peeves on Twitter and at, at Fishbowl Inventory, and we will, we will um, feature you on the next podcast. But um, I don't want this to get out of hand because I two of these people in the room share the office with me. 
But oh, what are some of your office trying piece? to make it too personal? We'll do so I feel, first. I, why, why can't you start? I feel like you're... I'm going to come back because i got to start thinking. I already told fine. him that I was nervous. Yeah, this sounds like it's going to get personal in here really fast. My, so, you know, because I'm fortunate enough to only have to bug you guys twice a week and come in office twice a week, when I am here, I feel like I really got to get a lot of stuff done. And so my office peeve is feeling like if I'm not getting stuff done or if someone's wanting to come in and just chit chat, sometimes I go like, I'm going to go crazy yeah. because I feel like I'm not doing anything of value. Because you're only in the office twice a week. Correct. And so when you are here, you're like, I have to make sure I'm churning. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, there's yeah. so many people you need to talk to and I only have so much time. Yeah. And then I have to leave after four hours. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're on that four hour work yeah, week, four. bro. <laughs> you're <laughs> phenomenal. You're not. <laughs> No, but I, I get this like extra stress of like I don't I don't want to hear that story right now. I want to get yeah. back to what we were doing. Text me the story later. Yeah, or even so like I when there's like a deadline coming up, right? And you're like trying really hard to make sure you hit that deadline. Yeah. It's like someone comes in, like, oh, you'll never believe what happened this yeah. weekend. But Sorry. I mean, you, that was you've, a loud crackle. You've, no, you've, you've got it. You've got. I mean, office politics being what they are, like you just people want to be able to visit. Sure. Like that's that's part of being cordial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's that line too, or it's you kind of want to look at that person like, can you not? I'm giving you the vibe, like yeah, to get out. That's actually like one of mine is when I'm like going to visit an office to ask a question. Yeah. And I've literally got my head in the door, body outside the door on purpose. <laughs> just, hey, do you do this, blah, 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 whatever. And they're like, yeah. So, and they just start into a story and I'm just slowly. Or even if you're, you're in. Breaking my threshold. Away. But yeah, you're making so the, you know, you're making the my very forehead. obvious uh, visual retreat. You're like, yeah. no, I'm I'm leaving, and I'm still leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm in the hall now. Yeah. And you're no, and we don't. They, we, we're they, both in the hall now. We don't need to do this. Oh, and then they keep. Yeah, and then they just rotate with you. Yep. And then they just come. Oh, yeah, that's out. I hate that, yep. dude. Yep. I hate that. All right, Nate, what's yours? I don't know. That's I'm it? trying to think. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I'm, you're not, gonna I'm not easily bothered. I don't know. No, I mean. I don't know. You don't like when just like the stand stuff at you when you're standing. Yeah, I mean, I really don't like it when people just people start punching me while I'm trying to type. And <laughs> no, I was gonna say just like standard, like just being a human being in general, yeah. like just hygiene. Like, hey, don't fart while I'm sitting next to you, please. Oh, yeah. Like, it'd be really nice not to have to smell <laughs> everything leaking out of your body if just the door's closed and the heater's on. Hygiene. <laughs> no, I think uh, there's as simple as that is. Like, that's. There's not enough of that sometimes. It's <laughs> right? like you really, you know, like if you don't want to shower, I get that, but you also work with people, so let's do that. I think it's mostly like smells, right? Like there's always like the office etiquette, like oh hey, don't heat up your Brussels sprouts in the microwave yeah. because the entire office is gonna stink. Or fish, people do fish, fish, all the broccoli. Time. It just, but well, I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to eat healthy. So I don't know is. what you want, like. I got I got a night eat healthy because of you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I don't complain. Go and have a hamburger have, like everybody else. When you have that extra donut, I don't say anything. But does it stink? It smells like donut. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, fair. I'm taking um, that very personally. I know you looked at me when you said that extra donut. <laughs> I not. get it. Please. Okay, so we're gonna. Sean's a. Sean's got fact first of oh, all. Incoming yes. fact. Breaking news. Oh. So ISIS shut down in 2015. Google Wallet replaced it. Oh, yeah. So they were like a merchant type thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like what you said. We're, we're up and picking them up. Yeah. That's good. Well, at least one ISIS shut down then. Oh, um, so wait. Sean communicates through the, the screen here. <laughs> Apparently, this is the most so wait, when we, when we read it, When we read it off the screen here, does it, do it has to be like more like robotic. <laughs> yeah, so James, like, you can read that. I'll, I'll do it. Down. So Sean's office peeve. Nice to your face, but talk smack behind your back, JK. Don't use this. <laughs> <laughs> you the JK. <laughs> That's Sean wrong. has confirmed that, yes, that is a very robotic voice. Thank you, fact checker Sean. Fact checker Sean has played you, Sean. a huge um, role in this episode today. Yeah, this See, that's, I'm telling you, you know, Sean really is this the, the silent partner here. We need to make sure people are aware of the Sean. Yeah. The Sean. That's it. It's the Sean. But you don't understand that there's been episodes where he just up and dips in the middle of the episode and we don't know he's gone. So well, we look how, out how for a fact know? check. And we need facts out. and then he's got no facts. Well, oh, the people man. don't or know. We're but we need to know. And then the screen we just casts use, to something else. Apparently now you just give it to alternative <laughs> facts. That's fine too. <laughs> it's my favorite when the screen casts to something else. <laughs> Yeah, dude. It's like, well, we know what Sean's doing. I'm reading that, and then all of a sudden we're watching, you know, some comedian on YouTube. <laughs> like, oh, well, all right. 
Okay. Um, all right, we'll come back to another segment. But yeah, if you have any of those office peeves, hashtag office peeves. Did you give yours? Fishbowl inventory. Or was I not yeah. paying attention? I might even wasn't yeah, paying attention. I yeah, that, well, that was it actually. We, you know, we were just people don't pay attention. You want to talk don't pay attention to me. <laughs> you know, we were just sitting here discussing it. We haven't gone anywhere. It was literally my talking. bad. My B. No, yeah, that was it. I was no, I was saying when you're when you go to visit somebody and you have a quick something to say and then oh, they keep talking to you. you Piggy backed off of James is. That's no, that like literally. Yeah, it's yeah. mine. This office is actually pretty cool. It's mine too. It's pretty chill. Yeah. Um, okay, we're gonna talk about your forte video marketing. Oh, right. Give a little bit of background on, and don't be modest. I know, you're, like you have a pretty extensive background in video. Oh, so how, yeah, how, give, like, how 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 extensive? No, I like how qualified are you to talk about this? Um, <laughs> Hollywood qualified? Wow. Or well, you know, not I'm, Hollywood qualified? I'm more used to doing the really YouTube big videos. Hollywood productions so on the small scale stuff. No, just kidding. It's just um, a new world for you. No, actually, so I, I went to school for you know theater, media, arts. So this is obviously something I've done for years and years and years. I even made a TV show back in the day. So I've, I've loved all So you were a theater video. kid? Oh no! Okay. Don't you ever? No, we're about to. <laughs> I'm going to leave if you say that again. I will. I will walk out. Why is it those, a bad thing to be a theater? No, kid? let's let's you know tangent. Those kids <laughs> that are singing in the Harris Fine Arts Center of whatever they think is great, they're not. They're really not. <laughs> Nate, other Nate, was that you? Yes, that's another office peeve that I'll talk about later. Oh what? man, singing. Uh, when people tell me that I'm not good at things that I do on the side, it's fine. Oh well. <laughs> Keep at it. Maybe someday. So I'm not good at on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening right um, now. Let's move on, please. You know, so I've been involved in video for a long time. Um, and randomly, I think when I started here, I was to write copy. And then once they found out that I had a background in production. What does that um, mean, write copy? For sorry, those, right, so write copy for those is that aren't essentially... For like me. Like well, it's, it's a pretty common term. Most people know what it is. My 12-year-old probably does. <laughs> <laughs> James is on fire today. Nerdy, Co- theater Co- kid, copy yeah. is any of the, the messaging or the articles or essentially okay. like you're trying to maintain consistency within your website or your company's messaging okay. Okay. externally. Um, and that would so be, they brought you on to do that. Yep. And they got here and you're like, oh, you actually have other and They're accounts. like, oh, okay, like you're... You don't know how to write very well, but you can actually do video. <laughs> how well, about we do? They feel bad for me. When you showed up with your friends, they're like, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> I couldn't stay in the line, so like, well, we'll give them a camera and see what happens. <laughs> um, so we actually started a whole channel, uh, well, on our YouTube channel, a whole uh, playlist called Whiteboard Wednesdays, um, and we we stopped doing them for a little bit. We're back doing them now, but we actually got a pretty decent. Um, views with that where I mean that's some of the top when you search like inventory management inventory yeah. control any of that what's our, our YouTube quick plug for that so our plug YouTube is just it's fishbowl inventory and it's so On if you YouTube. type that in in YouTube search bar boom right there so if anyone wants to watch a whiteboard Wednesday James is the guy behind the camera and, 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 and sorry, unfortunately, the James camera. is the handsome one for the one in longest front of the time. James so I mean, is this is this is how flex in most of the time. So this actually this this could be helpful. So I think a lot of times people get nervous about starting out any kind of video production because they want the nicest equipment and believe me so do i but it's so much better to just at least start out with what you have than planning for this like never Elaborate. this perfect tomorrow that will never happen mm-hmm. i mean we had this really crappy nikon camera when i started hated that thing our lighting setup Shout was literally yeah. well it, it you guys could do better um we had this crappy cowboy studio. That was the company. It's like this Chinese knockoff for like 100 bucks from Amazon. It was like three <laughs> crappy lights that did not go together. And that was our lighting setup. And so, I mean, you look at those early, even a lot of our Whiteboard Wednesday videos, they're rough looking. And we were just, we were doing the best we could. Um, but now, I mean, they're, you search for those and they're like one and two ranking wise. And it's just because awesome. we kept putting out content. Yeah. Um, and now, I mean, our camera, our lighting, everything is way Upgraded. better. Yeah. But it's only because we finally learned a lot of lessons in the creation of that and, and talking about things that people need to know relative to inventory or things, companies that, you know, are related to inventory and inventory management and processes. Yeah. Um, so it actually became a lot bigger than I think we ever knew it would. And so that, that's been that's been great. But it, it's also helped us learn how to use what we've learned for other videos, product videos, case studies, which have, they're just better and better and better. Yeah. With the improvement with the video quality and like the uh, material as well, I guess, 
Have you noticed your celebrity status increase like along with that? <laughs> your celebrity clout. Oh man, I gotta lock my door. No, um, <laughs> can't even go no, to the there, grocery there store the anymore without people being like whiteboard Wednesday. Oh man, yeah, just this whole throng of people. This it's like really two guys. Um, <laughs> no, there was this this guy that uh, last year at QB Connect was like, "You're that guy," and at first I didn't realize what he was saying. It was the weirdest moment. I'm like, "Oh, I'm." I think every celebrity has that moment. Here's my 15 minutes. There you go. You know, there you go. Came and went. Did he get your autograph? No, I I was charging too much, I guess. Or he was just too nervous, one of the two. Yeah. I mean, it was a moment for sure that we shared. That's awesome. When would you, so a couple of the, so advice as far as most important thing to know going into making video content. So that's probably good advice, right? Start with what you have. I mean, even this podcast, we, took way too long to start it because we were waiting for everything to be perfect, perfect equipment, logo, the jingle, like all that crap, right? Yep. Which, as you can tell by listening, it's now oh, very perfect. So freaking perfected, man. Well, it, Got yeah. it down to a science. The way we're talking about stuff Pimpel. and staying yeah. on track, it's super, you know what we're doing. Super professional. Nothing inappropriate has been said so far. At no all. tampon examples. Yeah, we, That we would be stupid. Um what any other advice for someone first, like for someone starting their business, or let's say a product company that normally doesn't like something that doesn't need an explainer video? What other instances would you use video marketing? Like that's the way of the trend. Like that's there, the there's way. it's a huge uptick in that trend. Um, I would say you can you know if you're doing explainer videos, that's great. Even if you're just doing training videos can be really helpful. If you have something where a, a customer needs to manipulate the software or have some kind of software that they're going to run into problems, yeah. if you have a means for them on their website or however you're trying to uh, inform them to get their answers that they need quickly, I think that could be super helpful. Yeah, Because not only do you provide essentially customer service, you know, but you're helping out yourself, too, because there could be some very common frequently asked questions or issues that you're tackling with. And you're giving if you can get it right there where it's easily accessible, people get their answers and, and you're not holding up the lines. What about product companies? Uh, for product, I think don't try to make these huge videos where you're, you're waiting up, waiting up. And we're definitely guilty of this, too. But if you can just constantly kind of keep contact with your customers with your followers even on instagram like yeah I, i've i've seen some of the products that i enjoy in my own life um it's because they're always just putting out little stuff or little highlights or little updates about how the pre-workout changing. the barbell exactly okay. you're not far off um <laughs> how much can you bench by the way <laughs> side note <laughs> a lot um <laughs> No, but there's something. <laughs> Can that be the that next video, Whiteboard here's, Wednesday? Here's the thing. Watch James Bench. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the name of this episode, here's, by the way. Here's the thing. Bench? I'm not kidding. Nowadays, I mean, it's not hard to have like an iPhone 11. It, it, you could literally use that for your camera. And starting out, that's so okay. Absolutely. What about Absolutely. an iPhone 5? Uh, um, Sean whoever, still owns one of those. I, I, I didn't want to say four. anything. Sean on the 4? Ooh. I mean, it looks like a three. I don't know. Five so the curved edges. Didn't, didn't Tim Cook personally called him and just said, what's up, Ben? Right? Hey, you're the last living like, person with oh, this phone. Got... <laughs> they wanted to talk to you to see. Sean's got a five. <laughs> <S. laughs> he just put that on the screen. <laughs> He's... I'm not kidding. He has a five S, everybody. I think it's lower. Everyone, you know what? everyone what exaggerates if... a little bit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what if everyone listening right now just chips in a few bucks and we start a campaign, hashtag get Sean in 11. Yeah, I'm going to post a GoFundMe link. Into That's what thing. I'm saying. That's what you do now, right? If you need money, you have other people pay for it. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I think we should do it. GoFundMe. Okay, but no, but to, to, to finish out that thought about hold video. Hold on. Wait, wait, before what, you finish it, oh, Sean writes another, another office beef demeaning comments about my phone. <laughs> We're over that segment, Sean. Let's move on. Yeah, you need to keep up. Well, that's, that's way back then. If you're going to fact check, you got to stay up with us, buddy. Yeah. It's finishing out the thought. Okay. Reason. I think the, the biggest thing with some of the videos is look at it from a layman's point of view or an outsider's point of view. Like there's so many times that we start making videos thinking, oh, they're going to get this or this will make sense. And we lose track of like, well, what's the point of the creation? And there's so many videos that I see out there that they're way too long 
where they're so busy oh, trying to build up hype where it's like, get to the point. Yeah, yeah. It can be three minutes or less, right? Or oh, 60 seconds. Six, oh, even less than that, depending I on the platform. Man. But I mean, seriously, get to the point. If you need a little build up, if it's a product video trying to hype something for a moment, fine. But yeah. get to the point. And if don't, don't do, there's so many companies that still do like these weird intros in some of their YouTube videos. It's like, no, you can, something brief, fine, but get to the point. Yeah. Especially now when it's like, the whole millennial, like, I want stuff now, I want it yesterday, and I want it to, you know, like, yeah. people don't have the patience or time for oh, anything. I'm, not, I'm anything. not a millennial, but I don't have the patience You're either. a millennial, dude. Stop acting like no, 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 no. Okay, boomer. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> boomer. We talked about that last episode. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> no, but I think everyone's getting, I mean, even, even my dad, who can hardly operate, love him, but he, like, he hates his smartphone. I feel like he's always feeling awkward with it. Yeah. But I think even for him, he's kind of like, okay, get to the point. Like, yeah. People just want the info they want out there, yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think about like watching YouTube, you get those ads that pop up, right? Oh. You can skip the ad in five seconds. If their message isn't across in those five seconds, then good luck. Yeah. No like, way. If they're trying to do some kind of cool intro, it's like, I don't care. Yep. I'm being forced to watch this and I'll skip it as soon as that button changes to skip now. You, you really should get an ad blocker, by the way. Yeah. I like to support local. I don't no, know they're not saying. local. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, Never mind. The Chevy commercial? On. That's what you're... Anyways. The local Chevrolet dealer? Yes. Thank you. Shout out to Todd at the local Chevrolet dealer. <laughs> Todd's nice. Todd, Todd is great. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to do one more segment before we ask a more video questions, and then we will end with inventory tip of the day. This one's called Quick Questions. Fi this is all to you, James. Oh, this is for the guests, dude. Is this rapid fire? Is this like where, five where's my little sand time? Three seconds to answer, and then Nate, you just keep three seconds. And if he doesn't answer, you just do a nice, annoying buzz noise into the mic. Okay, good and annoying. You want to sample that? What's that sound like? So I know. Bzz. Oh, or it should it be more of like a. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I, don't, I think you broke a speaker. Well, I'm just right, saying how Ten annoying questions. are we talking? <laughs> Ten questions, three seconds each. All right, where is the worst smelling place you've been? The bathroom. <laughs> Texting or talking? Texting. How many unread emails do you have right now? Two. That's a lie. Favorite city in the U.S. besides the one you live in? San Diego. Nickname your parents used to call you? <laughs> James. <laughs> That's not a nickname. <laughs> Fill in the the oh, sorry, favorite. Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, fill in the blank. Taylor Swift is blank. Boring. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? <laughs> yes. Favorite childhood TV show? Uh, oh, that took too long. Do you ever post inspirational quotes Full on house. social media? No. Yes. Do you speak? Do you, no. Okay, last question. <laughs> this is most important. Do you like the word moist? <laughs> Man, like that. that turkey was moist. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> All right. Okay, back to the subjects. Last what do you mean last not question. like that? <laughs> <laughs> not when it's said closely to the microphone or no. to your ear? When no. it's whispered in it's your ear? Mustache. It's the mustache Moist. is what's doing it. Okay. Last question. This is a um, good question. Uh, well, oh, so we talk, so? About, this fiber. Isn't a we talk about fiber and we talk about Upwork and all that stuff, right? You're mm -hmm. talking about branding. For video, and this is where I'm like, I feel like it's way more hands-on. What what cost should a company if, if if I'm a listener and I'm like okay like maybe we will start dipping into videos and getting getting involved that way, what should you expect for a good explainer video or product video? Let's say a thirty second well done video that you can use in multiple plat platforms. What so what's a decent cost? What should they ballpark? You're talking just fully out outsourced, or you want to try to get in house? Whoever, no, not you know, not an just, in house just, person. You're just paying just, a guy. Just a one time thing. One time thing. I mean, if if because if it's a one time thing, you're not going to bring someone on full time. If you don't have right? in mind that it's going to cost you a thousand dollars to have something actually credible, I think you're crazy. Now that doesn't mean seems so cheap. A th but I mean, I'm always shocked at how much people think video should cost, not understanding how much work goes into just making L the simplest low balling. Video. You're making yes. Okay. And so, I mean, I think I definitely know people that have gotten a very cheap video from some kid that's still in college and. And their mind is, oh, it's good enough. But I look at it, it's like, well, yeah, this but it's garbage. still, it's this is for your company. Like, then it's not portraying your company in a very professional light. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Yeah. I mean, if it it's seems customer facing. Absolutely. And, that, and that's another part. Yeah. If, it, if this is like one of your first main videos 
and you're like, I'm not spending more than a thousand dollars. You're you're insane to me. Okay. Unless you have some actual like production knowledge on your end, and you're putting into that. Yeah. I mean, but really, like, I'm I'm more in the five grand category. Yeah. Um, and I know that's actually that's I think what you that, charge. You're saying. Oh, that's what I would charge. Because you want freelance yourself. Because if I if I don't know the person, I'm setting it higher because I have to mitigate for all the times, all these little adjustments that they just assume are rolled up in the are class. like, oh, that's so easy. Just do this, this, and this. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Doing that tweak is a whole new adjustment here, adjustment there. Yeah. Or it's like if we have to get a whole new voiceover, now we want to add – you know, 10 more lines. Well, that's fine, but now I still have to pay the voiceover guy. And I'm not just doing some guy from Fiverr that, you know. From Scotland. Ex- I'm not getting John O'Callaghan because as much as I our love intro him. Video, our intro song is Fiverr, I'm not, dude. I'm not I'm not kill it. About. No, but that's, but that's a good point. Like, that's, it's, that was, how much did that cost? Five actual bucks? Ten bucks? $65. Okay, $65, $65. right? And that's not bad at oh, all. always end in fives. Uh, but there. how many adjustments did that come with? How many? Two. Right? But if you're actually trying to make a video that you want perfect for your product, you're going to be paying it over and over and over compared to someone that's like, here's the price, and that's for everything. Yeah. Well, and that's audio, not, not video. But that's what I mean. That's only one part that would go into a video is there's a component that is audio. What's like the timeline that you're looking at? Like, So say all the filming and everything is done at this point. Well, are we talking live action, like there's actors, or is it pure animation? Oh, Let's do one of each. You're getting too far into this weeds. Okay, I'm just, I'm just kidding. saying all no, the I'm filming. Kidding. Kidding. All the filming is done. Like so, I don't know. You're looking at like a business owner who's thinking, okay, filming is done. So what? You're getting this to me tomorrow? Why is next day? So like yeah, why yeah, is this yeah. going to take so long? What's the actual timeline we're does looking that happen at? I often? mean, if if you want it done in a week, you're going to be paying extra. Okay. Because that only does need to be, to you know, you need your rough cut assembled. Uh, you need any if you have any compositing, any kind of effects that you need done. And then after you get that locked, that's when you're starting to make adjustments to color, manipulating sound, background music. Uh, I mean, what if? I mean, there's times where maybe you don't like the the actor actress's voice, and like it sounds like terrible, but you can't yeah. afford to actually like reshoot. Well, now you got to pay a guy the ADR, which is essentially like dubbing over that person. So it's like there's so many things that can happen. Like for you to think that there's just like no, you just pay it and it's this perfect, smooth going process. It's like to make that perfect video that you were outsourcing for, there's so many little adjustments. And that's that's normal. That's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so if you're planning on doing, let's say you do the first video and it's awesome, gets great results, you get your ROI on it, and you want to do more, like it, it makes way more financial sen- sense to bring someone in-house, right, mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. Because in all reality, from what we've talked about, at least in my opinion, like you have to have video. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm a bit biased, but it's it's so prevalent. Yeah. And there's so many people that they don't want to read something. They don't want yeah. to, they want to just, you just, just tell just them it, in a yeah. video, or they want to see the actual product, or they want to see the screen capture alongside with explanation. I mean, that's, I've seen such a difference now when we first started. We would never show our software. And we'd talk about it, and we would discuss, like, here's what it does. We'd never show it. But now it's like it's such a difference to, to show the screen capture, even though it's kind of boring. And so you have to find out better ways to like visually kind of express stuff and then move on so that you're not also like, well, this is boring. I'm staring at a software page. Yeah. But you need to see it at the same time. Yeah. So you got to find a good mix. That's great advice, man. Yeah. That's great. Well, let's end with an inventory tip. Um, fact checker Sean is pulling one up for us. Here we go. He wasn't already ready? What? No, it's, it's there. Sorry. I, I was looking at the wrong the wrong screen. Um, what What is inventory... Oh, sorry. Seven ways to prevent inventory shrinkage. What is inventory shrinkage? Inventory shrinkage is, is when actual inventory levels are less than accounting has them, has them recorded as. Usually this means that something has gone wrong, either from an accounting error or theft. All right, so some of the causes of inventory shrinkage, we talk about this a little bit, like on doing on sites, and I think we have some reports that account for this in Fishbowl. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't love talking about shrinkage, but we'll talk about it here. Uh, employee, so here are the causes of inventory shrinkage employee theft, 42%, shoplifting, 35%. Wow, that's actually shocking. Employee theft is higher. Um, administrative, 15.4%. So someone just mess, messing up data entry. 
Vendor fraud, three point seven percent, and then unknown, three point nine percent. Sean loves his, his numbers and stats. Well, Sean, how did you get to the three point nine? Why, why didn't we just round to four? You know, <laughs> like just four. It's four percent. It's, it's not three point nine unknown. This it's is all 4%. data that Sean has gathered himself. There's no sources necessary. <laughs> Sean is the source. <laughs> Sean went yep. out. Well, Sean, as soon as we started this episode, he boom. went out and he was gathering the data. He was compiling, knocking data. down doors. He was knocking at doors. He was doing oh, interviews. Man. He was he was finding contacting the ISIS. Causes of, yeah, he was finding. I'm saying causes. I went to school five and above. Give it a shove. I'm just saying. <laughs> Flash. <laughs> oh man. All right. Uh, so here are the seven ways to prevent. Number one, install item tracking. So that's something like inventory management software, like Fishbowl. Oh, hey, yeah. Uh, number two, count inventory often, which is shocking how often people do not count inventory. I'll tell you from the, the on task. sites that I've done. Yep. Hey, when was your last time you guys did an inventory cycle count? Uh, two years ago. What's that? Yeah. yeah. All your numbers are what's, good. What's why? Yeah. Uh, three, surprise audits. Audits. Um, four, heightened security measures, cameras, meaning cameras. Five, split responsibility, so it's not just one warehouse worker doing everything. Number six, educate employees, which you could use a video for, right, James? You should. You should. Actually, in- internal videos can be very helpful. Yeah, we just actually had someone send one a couple minutes ago. About we uh, we a had type of training. It's cool. Yeah. We made one with a puppet a while ago. No one liked it, so maybe don't use a puppet. I was a fan. I saw that one. Um, last number, last way to prevent inventory shrinkage. Number seven, work with a 3PL, so a third-party logistics company that essentially handles all the inventory for you, does all your pick, pack, and shipping for you. Fishbowl works with a ton of those companies. Um, there's some pros and cons, which we'll get in. You know, I feel like time. I we feel should like do an really, about 3PL. You're missing actually. out. On a, cool. a big opportunity here, I feel like number one should actually be if, if theft is coming from employees, you hire a second person to follow that guy. Oh. Well, that's what the split responsibilities is for, right? Well, so. no, but you need to hire like it's oh, like specific. a ghost shopper, but a ghost employee. Well, like they have a taser or something. Like it's very <laughs> obvious. Like you're gonna get hurt. What if the taser guy is stealing stuff? They the other guy watches him. Everyone, if we're just following each other with tasers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is a good way to good place, increase your costs as a well. Good place to end. That's a good place to end. <laughs> All right, James. Uh, James. Thanks for being on, man. I got to hey, say, you. you've got a great podcast voice. I mean, you've said a lot of mean things to me today, but I'm yeah. still going to compliment you at the end of this. You can bench a lot. Yeah. And you have a great podcast voice. So. Um, yeah, that's great. You're gonna, you want to do the rest you. of the episodes? And Abs- I, and absolutely. I can do the video stuff. You've got a good yeah. face. Yeah, um, I'll hang out. So, yeah. So, episode six, how much can you bench press? So, look for us. We're on all the major platforms. Subscribe, um, share it with your friends, and make sure you get on to the segments of Office Peeves. And then another one we're going to start doing next week as well as Power Moves. So anything in the office, you have a boss or a director or manager or you that does some awesome, uh, those office power moves that are funny and send those in. So anyways, thanks for coming, James, and we will see you guys next week. Thank you. All right, see you later.